So welcome to the session today. I am going to show a slide so that you can follow what I'm going to share with you. And we will transition to watch a little video and then I'll tell you how to join the competition. So what we're doing today is we're going to record today's uh, conversation and then we will play it again on the ME, ME uh, Facebook page as well as Rimba's Facebook page. And then other people can watch this and they can participate in the competition as well. So I just saw that there is a new competition and it's a coloring competition. So there's a poster making competition and there's a coloring competition. So I will tell you more about it as we get to the end, okay? All right, so I see somebody else coming in and let us go to the slides. Ta -da. Okay, so today some of you have been invited through our partnership with Childline. And so you see the Childline logo, the MME logo and Rimba. So if you see in my background, my virtual background, that was the Rimba card. And today we're going to talk about cara cara nak buat poster. So Roshan, you prefer I speak in English or in Bahasa? Hey, Sorry? I speak English. Huh? If you want me to speak Bahasa, you tell me no, to speak Bahasa. No, teacher can also. Go and... Can also Bahasa. Okay. So hari ni kita nak belajar macam mana nak buat poster. And kita nak cakap pasal gajah Asia. Sekejap eh. Okay. So. Kita nak cakap pasal apa pentingnya gajah sebagai pembina habitat mikro dan juga petani hutan yang mega. Jadi yang first tu, pembina habitat. Tahu tak apa maksud pembina habitat? Tahu eh? Okay, so dalam hutan, setiap kawasan yang ada hidupan tu adalah satu habitat dan di sini pembina habitat mikro, that means habitat tu kecil sangat. Ah, tu satu peranan gajah. Yang kedua adalah gajah sebagai petani hutan mega. That means dia menanam pokok dalam hutan tu sebagai um, haiwan yang besar. Okay? So, memandangkan kita ada Roshan, kita nak tanya. Roshan, apa beza gajah sebelah kiri dengan gajah sebelah kanan? Ada beza tak? Sebelah kiri besar, okay. Yang kanan? Kanan tu kecil. Yeah, like, kecil. Ada apa-apa yang lain lain tak? Oh, ah, dia punya kepala dia ada beza tak, Roshan? Ada, telinga dia lebih kecil. Ah, sebelah kanan telinga dia lebih kecil. And then kepala dia macam mana? Bentuk ada ada bonjol sikit ke flat? Ada bondol sikit. Ada bondol sikit eh. Okay. So lepas tu dekat um, uh, apa tu dia punya ekor. Nampak tak ekor yang sebelah kiri dengan sebelah kanan. Ada beza tak ekor dia? Ada. Uh, apa tu? Uh, gajah yang sebelah kiri. Apa tu? Panjang ke pendek ekor dia? Ah, ekor dia pendek. Dia ekor dia pendek kan? Ah, and then nampak tak kalau tengok belakang dia, bahagian belakang dia kan? Satu tu melengkung, satu lagi tu membulat. Nampak tak? Sebelah mana membulat? Sebelah kiri, sebelah kanan? Habis ah, itu kan sana. Uh, yang, yang besar. Habis itu yang sorry. So yang sebelah kiri tu, yang kepala dia bulat, badan dia pun melengkung, uh, bulat juga. Yang sebelah kiri tu, kepala dia lepeh, badan dia pun macam uh, melengkung ke dalam. Satu tu membongkok keluar, satu membongkok ke dalam. So, tu adalah perbezaan yang ketara macam antara gajah Afrika dengan bunuh. gajah Asia. So, yeah. kalau uh, kita tengok kan, gajah yang ada dekat Malaysia ni adalah gajah yang sebelah kanan dan gajah ni adalah uh, macam kepala dia membonjol dan ikut dia panjang. So ada beberapa lagi um, features uh, yang akan membezakan antara gajah Asia dengan gajah Afrika, okay? Okay. okay so sekarang saya nak cerita pasal macam mana gajah ni membina ekosistem yang mikro. So nampak tak dekat bawah tu ada gajah bawah tapak kaki gajah tu ada apa? Ada uh, Macam kawasan berlopak kan? Jadi bil gajah tu pijak atas tanah yang lembut, dia akan tinggalkan satu um, 
tekapan dekat tapak kaki dia kan. Dan bila hujan, sebab kita kan hutan hujan tropika, air hujan akan bertakung dalam tapak kaki tu dan sebab dia bertakung, dia akan um, me, mengajaklah dia menjadi habitat kecil untuk katak bertelur dan berudu akan um, timbul and then daripada situ akan ada pokok yang hidup dan daripada situ mungkin ada nyamuk dan ada benda-benda lain yang hidup sekali dan bila ada benda makan mesti ada predator jadi burung bangau tu pun datang untuk makan uh, katak dan apa tu anak um, ber, katak berudu serta um, nyamuk tadi tu so sekarang saya nak tunjuk ke awak satu video tentang um, gajah alright tell me if you can dengar okay complex machine that performs functions yes, that are vital forests and grasslands, cool the planet, clean our air, and create rain clouds, right? These are important for us and for the animals in them. And now I'm hoping that at least you can agree on that, right? Now the animals in them don't just occupy their place in the ecosystem like random actors on a stage. No, the whole ecosystem needs them as much as they need it. Probably heard people say that, right? So let me make my case for the elephant. Elephants are the largest mammals in Asia and Africa. And because of this, they actually play a really unique and often irreplaceable role in their ecosystem. And because I know the Asian elephant better, let's look specifically at the Asian elephant. First, not only do a lot of these elephants dig wells to get mineral-rich water, but they also leave behind a lot of footprints, which can fill with water. And this helps other small animals to access the same scarce resources. At the same time, these actions create microhabitats for lots of other creatures, like frogs, which can lay eggs in the water. And really, a single elephant footprint can eventually turn into a miniature world full of life. Of course, elephants must eat. They eat a lot. An elephant can eat just about any plant, even ones with thorns. It can strip the bark off a tree, which eventually might kill the tree. And at first, this might sound really destructive and bad, but realize that a dead tree also makes a good home for other animals, like, say, birds that like to nest in the hollows. And because of their size and strength, elephants make short work of large fruits with shells that are difficult to crack. And other animals benefit from the fruits that drop on the ground as the elephants are foraging. And finally, the plants themselves benefit because, you see, elephants are gardeners. So here's the thing. Without these elephants doing their thing in the environment, a lot of these other animals would not survive. Who are we to decide which animals should be in the ecosystem and which ones shouldn't? So take out the elephant and you lose just a lot of individual species, smaller species that depend on these elephants for the changes, more so than you might if you took out just hypothetically one small animal. And if we take it one step further, if we're actually comparing a native ecosystem to one that's either bulldozed for development, either urban or rural, you know, say it's farming, then you're losing a lot of ecosystem services as well. The clean water that we drink and the air that we breathe are tied to that functioning ecosystem. So in the end, we all depend on those ecosystems to be healthy and vital. And getting back to the elephants, the native ecosystems where elephants are found depend on the elephants. So it's all kind of a cycle, right? I don't know if I made my case for the elephant. I think... Okay, so, kita nampak tadi... Uh... Gajah tu dia uh, membantu sebagai uh, penanam pokok-pokok baru daripada apa yang dia makan dan juga dia, dia dengan tapak kaki dia tu dia ada ekosistem yang kecil kan. Okay, so jadi uh, kalau um, kalau kita tengok nanti ada gambar sikit untuk awak nak um, kalau awak nak tanya soalan awak boleh tanya soalan. So kita tak apa tu? No, ni bukan classroom so <laughs> boleh tanya soalan. So tadi nampak kat tapak kaki lepas tu ada um, haiwan lain. So di lamp di um, bila orang um, pengkaji pergi ke lapangan, dia akan nampak macam ni. Dia jalan-jalan jalan lepas tu dia nampak tapak kaki, bila dia tengok dalam lubang tu dia nampak oh sebenarnya ada telur. Dan jadi proses uh, ini berlaku sepanjang tahun sebab gajah tu bergerak dari satu kawasan ke kawasan yang lain. So, yang nombor dua yang abang tu cakap tadi tu, uh, gajah tu sebagai petani hutan mega, betul tak? Sebab dia uh, makan, lepas tu dia akan berak dan dalam dia punya tahit tu ada uh, biji benih yang akan tumbuh jadi pokok, betul tak? So, dekat sini kita nak tahu, gajah ni sebenarnya makan apa? So, dia makan rumput, uh, yang atas sekali ni dia makan rumput, 
yang bawah ni dia makan um, akar pokok yang di sini dia makan uh, kulit pokok jadi dia pakai dia punya gading tu untuk korek dan uh, keluarkan kulit pokok tu yang bawah ni nampak tak dia makan apa Roshan? Oh, Tahu tak apa buah ni? Ha? Buah durian. Okay. Gajah tu makan durian. And then yang dekat ujung ni sebab belalai dia panjang, dia boleh sampai pokok yang tinggi-tinggi tu. Ha, jadi dia boleh dapat daun, anak pucuk daun, dia boleh dapat tangkap um, apa tu buah uh, dan macam-macam benda yang tinggi. So gajah ni sebenarnya banyak uh, jenis makanan yang dia makan. Cikgu dia dah dia tak rasa sakit tak? Macam mana? Dia tak rasa sakit dia makan makanan. Oh sebab tajam lah durian tu. Nampak tak dia punya gading tu sebenarnya, kan dia ada gading sebelah mulut dia kan? Dia pakai dia punya dia punya belalai untuk tolak durian tu ke dalam gading dia untuk pecahkan kulit durian. Jadi sebenarnya mulut dia masih dekat belakang. Dia tak gigit durian tu. Dia cuma pecahkan durian pakai gading. So bila durian tu dah terbuka, ada isi yang lembut tu kan? Ah dia akan kutip dengan belalai dia. Nampak tak dekat ujung belalai dia ada macam ada macam jari dekat sini kan? Ah dia akan pegang dengan jari tu untuk ambil hanya buah durian sahaja. Dan uh, yang yang isi itu saja. Lepas tu dia telan sekali dengan biji-biji. So dur actually uh, gajah ni pandai tau. Dia masa dia nak cabut uh, akar ni pun dia pakai kaki dia untuk hentak-hentak lantai dan dia korek-korek pakai kaki, dia pakai dia punya belalai. So dia sangat uh, kreatif guna dia punya kaki, tangan dan gading. So kadang-kadang kalau tengok gambar uh, gajah, dia punya gading sepatutnya sama panjang kan? Tapi satu mungkin pendek sikit. Sebab dia suka pakai sebelah ni. So dia, keep, dia pakai selalu, jadi dia akan jadi tumpul ataupun pendek sikit. So kalau awak tengok gajah, awak cuba perhatikan gading dia. Okay. So, gambar ni cakap pasal gajah makan. Apa awak rasa, apa perasaan awak tengok gambar ni? Kan tadi saya cakap dia akan makan buah tu dengan biji dia sekali kan? Ah, jadi bila dia makan sebab badan dia besar, buah tu jadi kecil je. Jadi dia telan sekali dengan buah sekali, dengan biji tu sekali dan bila dia berak keluar sekali biji-biji tu. So kadang-kadang bila biji tu dalam perut dia kan suasana panas ada asid jadi buah tu pula, biji tu pula akan mula bercambah dan bila dia keluar dalam tahi uh, tahi uh, gajah ni buah tu akan boleh terus hidup jadi macam ada uh, baja so tahi tahi gajah ni jadi baja sebab tu uh, gajah ni dikenali sebagai petani hutan mega sebab mega dia besar petani sebab dia menanam pokok dan uh, dia buat Pertanian ni dalam hutan. So ni kawan kita daripada MEME juga. Uh, nama dia Tan Weihan. Dia ni saintis dan dia ni kutip uh, biji benih daripada dalam tahi gajah. So dia dan kawan-kawan dia yang lain dia akan pergi cari kawasan yang ada gajah bila dia ada ekspedisi. Dia akan cari uh, apa sebenarnya biji yang dalam tahi gajah tu dan dia ada nursery sendiri. Rasanya dekat Nottingham juga. So ini adalah antara sampel uh, pokok yang dia, dia jumpa tumbuh daripada tahi gajah. Jadi kita tahu gajah ni makan apa? Dia makan mangga hutan, dia makan pokok buah setoi dan dia makan cempedak hutan. Jadi buah setoi tu uh, dia macam dia macam manggis tau. Uh, so kita dekat bandar kita tak nampak. Memang orang tak jual. Dia dekat hutan je ada. So, Gajah je yang makan benda-benda macam ni. Jadi bila musim buah, tahi gajah macam interesting lah sebab nanti ada pokok-pokok macam ni. So, rasa boleh buat poster tak? Dah ada maklumat-maklumat macam ni. Did I? Oh, there is another person here. Hafiz, I can't hear you. You're mute. Ya, yeah, Shahiba. Um, Shahiba no, here. Um, oh, ada limit umur tak? tak. Masuk. Untuk Sorry. masuk perbandingan ni, uh, dia tak ada, dia tak ada, um, dia tak ada ketetapan umur. Siapa-siapa saja boleh join. Uh, jadi, you boleh buat lakaran dan you boleh scan 
uh, gambar tu ataupun you boleh pakai uh, program seperti Canva yang boleh pakai dekat uh, internet pakai komputer uh, dan bila dah siap tu dia ada cara untuk um, nak submit. So sekarang ni kalau kamu buat nak buat poster, uh, kamu kena fikirkan apa topik yang awak nak cakap. So tadi saya cakap saya share dua topik. Satu adalah um, gajah sebagai petani dan satu lagi uh, adalah uh, gajah Uh, sebagai pembina ekosistem. Jadi jangan tak perlu buat dua-dua sekali. Mungkin fokus kepada satu topik. Lepas tu ingat apa gambaran yang awak rasa pasal uh, topik yang awak pilih tu. Lakarkan dulu. Uh, kemudian mungkin ada setengah perkata, uh, setengah yang awak nak uh, ketengahkan tu perlu perkataan dan setengah tu cuma lukisan. Uh, jadi awak boleh uh, testing macam mana uh, awak nak buat gambar tu macam apa kata apa yang awak nak pakai uh, mungkin awak nak tulis bahasa Inggeris mungkin awak nak tulis bahasa Melayu um, tapi make sure apa yang awak lukis ataupun gambar yang awak pakai di online tu uh, tidak mempunyai apa-apa copyright jadi kalau awak tengok gambar kalau awak ambil kat internet kadang-kadang dia ada tulis kan ada tulis perkataan di di atas gambar tu ah uh, gambar macam tu kita tak nak kita nak cari gambar yang betul-betul uh, bebas daripada apa-apa tulisan dan uh, mungkin bila kamu mencari gambar tu kamu mesti tulis uh, gajah Asia ataupun gajah di Malaysia. Kalau tidak akan dapat gajah Afrika. So kena betul-betul tahu gambar apa yang awak ambil dan awak kena pilihlah apa fakta yang awak nak masukkan dalam lukisan tu dan lebih kemas poster tu lagi baik. Jadi orang tengok dia terus faham. So saya akan tunjukkan beberapa sampel poster yang sudah ada. Jadi kalau awak nak tiru poster ni dan uh, kemas kini kan buat lagi cantik, buat lagi rasa uh, mungkin awak pandai melukis, uh, boleh cuba buat baru. So ini adalah Uh, informasi dia lebih kurang sama tapi cara dia letakkan gambar dan informasi tu berbeza. Yang sebelah kiri itu dia dia buat perbezaan antara antara Asian elephant dengan African elephant. Lepas tu dia tulis banyak perkataan tapi dia masih ada gambar dan dia um, gariskan di bawah um, topik uh, besar dia. So dia kata Asian elephant smaller ears and are shaped like India. African elephants are bigger ears, larger ears and shaped like Africa. Jadi dia tengok bentuk benua tu sama dengan bentuk telinga. Uh, dan dia kata um, gajah Asia hanya yang jantan sahaja ada um, tanduk dan uh, gajah Afrika kedua-dua betina dan jantan ada um, tusk. So hey. kalau tengok yang di sebelah kanan pula <coughs> gambar uh, gajah tu dia dia uh, dia pakai gambar lukisan bukan gambar sebenar kan jadi mudah lagi untuk kamu tengok dia punya perbezaan uh, tapi saya rasa um, dekat sebelah kanan tu dia pakai um, cara buat carta kan jadi nak baca senang dia straight je okey telinga kiri kanan uh, ke bentuk kepala kiri kanan dia bagi informasi tu secara uh, mudah dibaca. Jadi kamu boleh pilih uh, cara yang awak nak buat uh, ikut kesesuaian awak sendiri. Saya rasa poster yang paling cantik kurang perkataan. Jadi mungkin uh, cuma buat satu saja um, uh, informasi. So ini adalah daripada Indonesia. Uh, dia ba dia bagi fakta tentang sebaran di mana jumpa gajah dia. Uh, so gajah Sumatera ni jumpa dekat Pulau Sumatera. Habitat dia hutan tropika. Makanan dia rumput, daun, tunas tanaman. You know dia bagi option, dia bagi different uh, items. And then tengok background dia. Jadi kalau macam poster macam ni, boleh cuba buat pakai Canva. Ini adalah poster daripada MAME. Dia bagi perbezaan juga antara gajah Afrika dengan gajah Asia. Dia bagi informasi berapa umur gajah boleh hidup. Uh, dan dia bagi fakta tentang uh, apakah jenis kawasan yang akan ada gajah-gajah ni. Yang terakhir ni uh, ada dua poster. Satu poster tu dari National Geographic. Uh, tapi dia bagi poster ni uh, tentang gajah Afrika. Saya cuma nak tunjuk kadang-kadang ada poster yang bertumpukan um, fakta dan fakta ini ditunjuk secara perbezaan. Jadi dia bagi, okay, gajah ni Berat dia berapa? Kalau satu manusia, berat dia berapa? 
ah, kalau gajah ni tinggi dia berapa, kalau manusia ni tinggi dia berapa. So dia buat perbandingan, jadi kamu boleh faham betapa besarnya gajah tu. Untuk benda-benda macam ni, kamu kena buat research lah. Dan ini adalah yang terbaik kalau awak uh, ada masa dan uh, awak memang betul-betul minat tentang gajah, awak boleh pergi ke MEME punya Facebook page dan awak boleh, boleh tanya soalan. Sebab ramai orang dekat situ yang akan jawab. Kalau dia tahu, dia mesti akan jawab. Dan awak boleh guna fakta tu untuk awak buat poster. Yang sebelah kiri, eh, yang sebelah kanan pula, uh, pun dari National Geographic. So, dia tangkap gambar gajah. Lepas tu, dia letak fakta tu dalam kotak. So, tengok penggunaan warna dia. Dia suka pakai warna kuning, uh, warna biru tu dekat belakang. Uh, lepas tu, border dia warna putih. Yang sebelah kiri punya poster, uh, gajah dia dan manusia dia warna putih. Jadi, nampak kontras. Mudah nak baca. So, ini adalah idea bila kamu nak buat poster. So, kalau awak nak mendaftar, Uh, awak boleh buat, uh, awak boleh scan QR code ni, ada fakta gajah yang awak boleh dapatkan daripada Google Drive dan yang satu lagi tu adalah borang penyertaan. Uh, kalau tak nak pakai QR scan, uh, awak boleh pergi ke, eh, oh, kejap, ada satu lagi. Uh, awak boleh pergi ke MEME dekat Facebook, Management and Ecology of Malaysian Elephants Uh, dan awak boleh dapatkan dia punya uh, informasi dalam dia punya post. Dia memang ada post dekat situ. So seperti saya kata tadi, ada dua ada dua uh, kategori yang adik-adik boleh sertai. Uh, satu adalah untuk buat poster tu yang sebelah kiri dan yang sebelah kanan tu pasal uh, mewarna. So yang mewarna tu dia ada kategori tapi untuk membuat poster tu tak ada kategori. Uh, dan uh, tarikh dia adalah 12 hari bulan 8 sampai 7 hari bulan 9 dan dia akan um, uh, wawarkan siapa yang menang pada 16 hari bulan 9 jadi kalau uh, awak sertai uh, pertandingan ini uh, bolehlah uh, boleh nampaklah awak punya poster nanti naik dekat dia punya Facebook page ok so my Sesi sudah tamat. Saya nak tanya, ada soalan tak siapa-siapa? Nak tanya soalan apa-apa ke? Rasa boleh tak buat poster? You don't know how to do poster. Okay, so I you can find me on um, Rimba the Card Game on uh, Facebook and then you can ask me questions there. And we will, I, I, I don't know how to get in touch with you outside of this. But yeah, we can we can totally help you if you send us questions. And yeah, we can chat if you need help to do your poster. So there's so many videos out there on YouTube. You can go and Google uh, or you can go and search on YouTube uh, Asian elephants or elephants in Borneo, elephants in uh, Peninsula Malaysia, uh, Asian elephants. And then you will realize Asian elephants actually is, they roam everywhere. They go from Malaysia to Thailand, to Myanmar, to China. Because guess what? Elephants don't need passport. They walk only. <laughs> so it's the same family groups of elephants that roam around these areas. But unfortunately, because we have national borders, they actually can't cross over now. But in the past, in history, all these elephants would have moved around these larger landscapes. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff on YouTube and uh, you can definitely write to us at uh, Rimba the Card Game or you can write to MEME. So there is a Facebook page. I recommend you go and uh, check them out on Facebook and you will get to see um, a lot of information, especially now because it's like Elephant Week and there's so many things happening. There's so many webinars on elephants. So if you can't catch anything uh, or you can find any pictures or you need any help, you can always message us there. Okay? Do you learn anything about elephants today? Um, I learned that they are very important to forests because they help disperse seeds, which is very important for forests to grow. You know, different types of plants, there are different species of plants. And we need elephants to actually disperse their seeds and for them to grow. So awesome. elephants Thank you. a very important role in the forest. Nice. So, um, Haris, can you type for us what you think is uh, what you think elephants are important for? Elephant, because elephant is part of our ecosystem. Uh huh. We need elephant. We need elephant because they are part of our ecosystem. And if we got without animals, we don't have a lot of trees. 
Right. So they, they that farmer, right? So they 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 poop up all the seeds and they plant the trees. Fatin, you wanna share? Yeah, elephants so big, and then they don't need the passport to move around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's my favorite <laughs> part actually. They don't need passports to move around. They don't need passport. They don't have to renew it every five years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they just have to walk, right? They just have to keep yeah. walking. And then they move a lot, even though they're big, but they move yeah. a lot. Oh, that's an interesting fact that I didn't mention. Elephants, although they eat a lot of stuff and they eat a lot every day and they poop a lot, obviously they also drink a lot of water. So elephants are always near big water sources like rivers, and sometimes they, they, they go into inland lakes, but most of the time they are around areas that have a lot of water. So that's something that, yeah, I really find very interesting about elephants. Uh, so Harris mentioned uh, he wants to emphasize on coexistence. Uh, they are really a master in engineering of the forest. Yeah, so coexistence means that not just elephants and other wildlife, but also elephants with humans, because we need the space, they need the space, it is their space, but at the same time, they, you know, they create space for other animals to exist. So they kind of are those, um, how to say, really good um, animals that create positive spaces for other people. So very quickly, I'll share about how elephants actually help other herbivores stay healthy, by digging out a salt leaks, mineral leaks. So in the soil, there's all these mineral deposits and the elephant because is very big, right? It's very strong. It kicks the ground, it digs with its tusk, it pushes the soil with its uh, trunk and it uncovers these mineral leaks that actually give all the herbivores uh, their balanced minerals. So you see other herbivores going to the same spaces and licking the mineral leaks from there. So it's very, very interesting and it's a very important role that they play in the ecosystem. So definitely coexistence and being engineers in making the space livable for a lot of other things. So yeah, as the Harris said, it's a good engineer, right? So while they are moving, yep. they are cleaning the roads so all the small, small animals can move through the roads that they make. So it's yeah. a good animal. They are really they make pathways, they they, yeah. they they poop and grow stuff. So yeah, pretty awesome stuff. Mm. Cool. So we are timing out. Uh, I would like to say thank you every, very much for everyone for joining us today. Uh, we hope that we can do more sessions like this. Uh, so follow, follow MME, follow Rimba the card game. And maybe when there's new and upcoming sessions, we'll see you guys again. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Nisha. Thank no you, Nisha. No age limit, so everyone can, can, can contribute. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right. Everyone see you guys. Bye. 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 Thank you, everyone. Bye. 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 When we talk about seed dispersing, you can actually see in the dung all these little seeds. And this is now, I'll also show you what it is when it's on a tree. But you can just see inside there all of them, uh, all these seeds. You can just imagine how a ball like this can also be beneficial for grass and this is actually now a, a thorn tree a circle bush but um, I'll show you the little seeds and they've been devouring that yesterday but you can see all these dung balls are filled with those seeds I'm looks a little bit drier now but even if you just take it outside just look at that Elephants are not like cows or goats or antelope, they're not ruminants, so they don't have a second stomach and a complicated digestive system. They're much more like horses. They rely on eating a lot, taking relatively little out of their food, and then passing through the rest. 
elephants need to spend so much time eating because they don't take very much nutrition out of their food. They rely on high throughputs, we call it. So they eat a lot, they make a lot of dung, and they're continuously putting new stuff into their system. So here we have a full-sized elephant dung. And this is obviously an old one, which is why I'm touching it. Um, but you can see if I break this open, it's kind of tough. It's all like straw. And this is because this is all the grass the elephants are eating. This is a non-digestible parts of it. Lots of fiber in this one. And you can see the grass seeds in here. So this dung has been kind of baked in the sun. It's really dried out. But sometimes what you find is that you find plants actually start growing out of this because this is a nice little bit of fertilizer ready deposited for seeds to start germinating. So sometimes when you break them open you find germinating seeds. It's also not uncommon to find that the dung gets pulled apart like this. And this can happen when animals like baboons search through looking for insects that are feeding on the dung. If you broke this open and you were with forest elephants, you'd see this would be full of seeds. And there's actually some certain species of plants where the trees grow better if they've passed through the digestive tract of an elephant. So if you take elephants out of an ecosystem, this seed dispersal capacity that they have gets really reduced and it really changes how plant communities develop and establish. So when an elephant deposits a dung pile like this, what they're doing is they're depositing more plant matter back onto an area. And that's the stuff that helps build soils. So it's a habitat for insects. You'll find other animals rootling through to find those insects and get the protein that's there. But you get these basically areas where you end up with soil breaking down. And so this is part of the nutrient recycling that goes on in an ecosystem. You can even see on this dung here, there's a whole little set of an ecosystem growing up. There's flies laying eggs in here. There'll be dung beetles coming along, taking bits away for their own reproduction. So this is a beautiful little seed bed. It's a pile of elephant dung packed with nutrients and seeds which for the past few weeks has been sitting on the forest floor in the rain. As you can see there are several species of plant growing out of it. If you look around this forest, most of the species of trees in tropical forests in Africa and Southeast Asia uh, and Latin America depend on animals to disperse their seeds. I often talk about Gorillas being the gardeners of the forest, and chimpanzees and orangutans, in fact all the primates, in fact all the animals that eat fruit. And of course the biggest animal that eats fruits is the elephant. That's why they've been described as the mega gardeners of the forest. And that's why ivory poaching isn't just a crime against elephants, it doesn't just cause unimaginable suffering and, and cruelty to families of elephants, intelligent social mammals, the adults of which, each of whom has a brain four times the size of a human brain, that's bad enough. But where elephants are being driven to local extinction, where forests like this that depend on elephants to disperse the seeds, particularly of the trees with large seeds, seeds that can't pass through a smaller animal, they need elephants. Now these forests are carbon stores, they're oxygen generators, they're rainfall producers. And without the elephants and the other animals that eat fruit and disperse seeds, these forests are dying. That's why when you look at ivory poaching statistics, when you think of the crime of killing an animal for its front teeth, you have to think not just of the cruelty and suffering to the animal and its family, but also to the effect you're having on the planet as a whole.